both Juventus and Cristiano Ronaldo will always remember March 12, 2019. However, in order to comprehend what transpired, we must go back three weeks to that date, which is when this whole thing began. Cristiano Ronaldo was under extra pressure as Juventus and Atletico Madrid squared off in the Champions League round of 16 first leg at the Wanda Metropolitano. He played against a team he had always been able to perform against in his first game back in Madrid as a Juventus player. This match, however, was exceptional. Juventus was defeated 2-0. Simeon having devised a brilliant scheme to frustrate Ronaldo, Juventus unable to muster a legitimate attempt at goal, and goals from Diego Godin and Jose Maria Jimenez did the damage. But it wasn't only their management. Even the supporters were able to reach Ronaldo. This was the clearest indication yet that the second leg would be spectacular. Ronaldo promised an entertaining match and that he will meet the Atletico Madrid supporters in Turin. And the entire globe watched the spectacular battle that day. It was game time at Allianz Stadium as soon as the whistle blew. Blaise Matuidi was already searching the box for a teammate to create a chance 25 seconds in, but the Atleti defenders got past him. They returned, and Matuidi's attempt was blocked for a corner this time. And as soon as the ball came in, it was chaos. Cellini thought he scored, but after a VAR check, the ref said no goal. He claimed Ronaldo had fouled all black, which made him lose the ball and wave play on. The statement was clear though, Juventus weren't here to play. Over the next 10 minutes, the game was tense. Juve started seeing the ball a lot on the left wing, but they couldn't make anything out of it. Atletico Madrid, on the other hand, was looking to see what they could get on the counter. And in the 22nd minute, they sent a gentle reminder to Juve that it could all change in a minute if they slipped up. Griezmann made the goalie work. Atleti continued to show Juve how vulnerable the score line could be. They already had a two goal lead, caused them to panic seconds after. But you see, all of this just meant one thing for Hugh. It was time they upped the tempo. Federico Bernadeschi found himself in space again, put in a cross, and boom. Cristiano Ronaldo's header was on target at the far post in the 27th minute, 1-0 Juve. Now we had a match. Juve only needed one more to level the game on aggregate. But away goals were still a thing, meaning if Atleti scored, we would be in for a very tricky situation. Just two minutes after though, and Juve thought they should have had a chance for a second. But the ref said no chance when Manjukic appealed for a handball. Play on. In the 31st minute, Juve came again. Bernadeschi was having a storming game down and won a foul on CR7 turf. At least that's what we thought. Bernadeschi surprised everyone by taking it and almost scored. In the 34th minute, Juve came again. They combined down the left, Ronaldo slipped the pass to Spinazzola. He, in turn, played a cross into the box, and when Bernadeschi connected with the ball, it was almost something magical. Just slightly over the bar, Diego Simeone and his Atleti team look rattled. And the game had only just passed the 30-minute mark. The Allianz Arena was electric. Both teams continued looking for ways into each other after this. Bernadeschi was finding it very easy to enter the Atleti defense and almost put Manzukic through one goal with a pass. Atleti continued to hold on and even managed a decent mini spell of possession. But in the 43rd minute, they should have been 2-0 down. Spinazzola's cross, but Ronaldo couldn't send the header in. Just before halftime, they had another glorious chance again. The ref blew the whistle for halftime, but anyone watching would have known this one was far from over. The next 45 minutes were going to decide it. Into the second half now, and straight from kickoff, Juve almost created another golden chance. Santiago Arias cleared the ball, else it could have been 2-0. In the 47th minute, Griezmann was with the ball on Juve's turf, but with very little support, he had no options. Juve won the ball back upfield, started the attack, got the ball into Bernadeschi from the right, and boom. Ronaldo with another header, 2-0, 2-2 on aggregate, and it was like someone had taken the roof off the stadium. Initially, the Atleti players claimed the ball hadn't gone over the line, but they forgot this was 2019, not 2009. We had goal line technology now, and it showed the ball had clearly gone over. At this point, the game had changed. 2-2 two two in aggregate meant, if it finished this way, the game would go to extra time and maybe even penalties, except it didn't look like that. See, the Jew players were hell-bent on finishing this one inside 90 minutes, and so they came again. Bernadeschi's header in the 54th minute was just off target, but it was another warning sign. Dio Simeone knew if he didn't act fast or wasn't proactive, 
he'd watch the game disappear right in front of him. So he made a change. Angel Correa came in for Thomas Lamar in the 56th minute, and barely two minutes later, Correa offered a positive spark for Atleti. As soon as he came on and started winning fouls, the match was threatening to boil over. Correa coming on had disrupted Jude's flow, he was a threat to the defense now, and in the 62nd minute, he had another pop at the old lady's goal, just blazed over. In the 64th minute, the ref gave the first yellow card of the game to Federico Bernadeschi. By the 67th minute, Juve's coach Max Allegri figured he needed something to up the tempo. Atletico Madrid was slowly growing back into the game, he needed something more dynamic in attack, and so he took off Spinanzola and brought in Paulo Dybala, game on. The two managers had brought in Argentines, looking to change the game. In the next three minutes, they left the football and fights came in. Murata and Cellini argued over a foul, Godin dragged Dybala back, and Coke kicked the ball away, no card. The game was on the edge now, in the 73rd minute, after a foul on Ronaldo, Miralem Chanik dinked the ball into the Atleti penalty box, and after feeling Juan Fern on his shoulder, Mandzukic went down hoping the ref would give a pen. But he said no, play on. By the time the game entered the 80th minute, the tension was everywhere. We were now seeing more tackles than shots, both teams were throwing everything at it just to score. Moise Keane had come on for Mario, and in the 82nd minute, he almost made an immediate impact, but he dragged his shot just wide. See guys, this was a sign of things to come. Juve knew how dangerous this two-goal lead was. If Atleti scored, they'd have to score two, else they'd be out. Time was also running out as well. The next goal was bound to be crucial, and in the 84th minute, all of that tension exploded when this happened. Foul on Bernadeschi. With VAR now, this one went in for a VAR check, and the whole stadium held its breath. If the ref gave it, you just knew who was going to take it for Ju. But if he didn't, a lady would have another lifeline. We didn't have to wait too long after. The ref had checked and made his decision. Penalty kick to Juventus, and Ronaldo did the rest from six yards out. 3-0 Juventus. The comeback was complete. He just scored a hat trick in the game, his eighth champions. League hat trick to tie him with Lionel Messi for the most hat tricks in the competition. Sensational. Ronaldo had promised the Juve and Atleti fans a game in Turin. And he delivered, but the match still wasn't over. Six minutes later, it was into the 90-minute mark, and the ref decided that for added time, it was going to have five more minutes. In the 91st minute, Ronaldo won a free kick off Vitolo, and the home crowd cheered hard. In added time, Juve did a proper job in keeping the ball, frustrating Atletico Madrid in the process, and pretty soon, added time was up. The game was over, Juve had done it. 3-0 versus Atletico Madrid. In truth, it was Ronaldo 3, Atletico Madrid 0. This was his fourth hat trick against Atleti. No one had scored more hat tricks against Simeon's team in history. He kept his promise too, shushed the Atleti fans in the process, and had made himself the most popular man in Turin that night. He even got his family to watch too. What a game. But just before the players went into the tunnel, Ronaldo had unfinished business on the night, a special delivery for Simeon himself. Payback really was complete. He almost got a fine, and UEFA banned for pulling this celebration. But after the game he just had, it was worth it. If you liked this video and haven't subscribed to JD Sport after this, that's illegal. Hit that button to the channel so you never miss out on any of the action.